Who else is a Star Wars fan? <laughs> hey everyone, just in case you didn't know who it was, Joe Bangles, president of Dark Sun Bikes Melbourne. Um, for those of you who did not know, I am a massive Star Wars fan. Um, so this day every year I, uh, I look forward to it so I've got lots of Star Wars stuff so and that mask is one of my uh, one of my favorites so um, hello welcome to episode 6 of Dykes Off Bikes this is uh, a very informal uh, chat with all our members you get to know uh, all about our members about our club we talk about all things Dykes, bikes, and life in general. Um, so this week we have Slinky Sev. Uh, Sev is uh, a, a member of Dykes and Bikes for the last, I think, two or three years. We'll, we'll clarify that. Um, and yeah, we're going to have a chat to Sev and find out what Sev gets up to when not riding, um, what Sev does for a crust, and why we call her Slinky Sev. It's a cool name, but we don't know why. We'll find out soon. Let's get her on the line. We hope everyone's doing well. Hey! Mate, I just realised <laughs> I have my phone sideways. So like, you had a haircut. I did. I got you it done on Saturday. Very feels, sharp, my friend. Feels so fresh and cold. You have no idea. <laughs> uh, I bet. Yeah. I bet it's it feels good. good. I love the feel of a shaved head. It's amazing. It's like I do. I, I do. But yeah. um, the past few weeks, like, it's been growing out for a while now. Yeah. And um, it's a bit long, so um, it stopped the wind from hitting it. <laughs> what, well, it to get to, like, four millimetres, not two? <laughs> <laughs> it's growing out of my ears. I look like Chewbacca. <laughs> hey, did you see my mask? Yeah, I did. I love it. I need one. I need one of those. I need one of those. <laughs> May the fourth be with you, young Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, welcome to episode six of Dykes Off Bikes. I've been looking forward to this interview. Um, so, uh, just introduce yourself <laughs> and and your pronouns, and um, yeah, yep. we'll have a chat. Cool. It's uh, Sev or Slinky. You could call me either way. Slinky Sev. Um, pronouns are she, her. And uh, been with Dykes on Bikes two, two and a half years now. Joined in yeah, 2018, was something like that. So, yeah, awesome, awesome. So, um, <laughs> first up, where did Slinky come from? Is it oh, okay well, was, <laughs> where did I come from? <laughs> the, the name Slinky. <laughs> oh, Slinky, sorry, cut out then. Well, oh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> now, long story short, um, Apparently, when I was a little kid, I used to bop along to music, and my nan used to call me, in a Turkish phrase, slinky. So I look like a bit of a wobbly slinky. Obviously, I fell, but um, <laughs> just gradually through the years, it just um, it just stuck with me. So yep. my uncles would call me slinky, brothers, um, yep. and I forgot about it for a while. And it was actually my gym, uh, my um. My um, PT instructor, who um, would he was a lovely gay man as well. He used to like dance while he showed me the ropes, yeah. and um, I was dancing away with him. And he's like, "You look like a slinky." I'm like, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> so <laughs> it just stuck. <laughs> it just stuck. Yeah, yeah right. So you, never, you never lost that slinkiness after all those years. Never, never. No. That's really cool. <laughs> Still fall right. over every now and then too, so it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you mentioned also you've got a Turkish background. Tell us about that. Where, yeah, yeah, my parents are like, my parents are immigrants. So I was the first grandchild born in Australia. Yeah. Um, they came in the seventies. So my grandfather used to uh, work for Anassis on the boats. He used to be a sailor. Oh yeah. And um, yeah, he came past here. And original stop was meant to be America, but they ended up here in Australia. So he preferred it. It was close to the home village because they were farmers. So, yeah. yeah they your grandfather? Yep. 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 Yeah, cool. So, yeah, and, well, and 
Bob's your uncle, we're here. <laughs> really? <laughs> so my mum was like, three. yeah, my mum was about four months pregnant to me when she came to Australia yeah. on her own. So, so both your parents from Turkey? Yep. Yep, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Are you grandparents? And then your parents were born here in Australia? No, I was born. Yeah. You, oh, so you my, were born. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was born here, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was the first, first grandkid, actually. First one. In the fan. Yeah, it's... cool. Cut out a little bit there. That's all right. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, uh, so tell us a bit about, I mean, because I want to talk about, you know, different cultural backgrounds and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and so we're just going to jump straight into the heavy stuff. Um, Let's do it. <laughs> why wouldn't we jump off the deep end that's what we're all about um so so coming out you know like let's talk about how long ago you come out and and what it was like for you and also you know obviously having that that different cultural background like what were your challenges well you know to be honest with you i am um, the only person that i've actually come out to in my family is my brother my youngest brother i've got three and the youngest two are twins but um, the, I've only just reconnected with him. So I haven't seen my family for about, it's going to be 13, 12, 13 years now. And um, left home for other reasons, um, just didn't get along. Um, but, uh, you know, reconnected with the young one. We were always close. And um, he was trying to get in touch with me. And I was just like a bit iffy about it. And thanks to wifey, just, just like, just call him. And I'm like, if I call him, I'm coming out. <laughs> so, and that was it, really. I gave him a buzz and and I told him directly and he's just like, and? <laughs> Literally, <laughs> and? He's like, uh, you know, obviously I had a nice little bawling session. I hadn't cried for a while, but hey, yeah. you know. Um, but it was good. It was really good reconnecting with him and um, educating him really, um, in regards to, you know, the LGBT community and stuff like that. And mm. I'm, I have to say I'm really proud of him. I mean, we've yeah. only we've connected since October last year, November. Yeah, yeah. And he's come a long way, which is really good. Yeah. So, um, but um, I've always been out at work um, and publicly, like I've been out as well. Um, but culturally, they're really, it's... It's pretty much the same as, you know, you get your, you get families who, uh, uh, I'm going to use the word accepting. I, don't, I hate using the word accept me because technically yeah. I don't care. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, um, you know, um, but I grew up in a, like my family, we're not, they weren't religious, a Muslim family, but we weren't religious, didn't really practice much or anything like that. But, um, it was more the cultural aspect of it that impacted it. Yeah. And um, it's weird because uh, in in Turkey, you know, homosexuality is legal. <laughs> so it's yeah. the cultural aspect of it that impacts, you know, how p society in itself, where you it depends on where you are in Turkey, how it impacts what happens to you or if you're discriminated against or, if, you know, certain areas are good, so certain areas aren't. Yeah. So... And it's the same here. A lot of the people who travelled to Australia, who migrated to Australia, came back and stayed with what they came with. Mm. And, um, you know, they've stuck to it. And it's I think it's more of a you marry into your own sort yeah. of thing. You know, get married, have kids, repeat the cycle. Get married, have kids, repeat the cycle. So, yeah. and I, I can't judge them on that. Yeah. You know, people are people. They either grow or they yeah. don't. So, have you have you been to Turkey? I have actually. I've been three times. Yeah. So and that kind of like since well, did you go over there? Because I know you've been with <coughs> your wife a long time now. Were you mm -hmm. when you're over there were you out and proud, or did you have to, you know, kind of go back in the closet? I actually wasn't out back then. Uh, when yeah. I went, I was a lot more younger. Um, yeah. So it was in my early 20s. I think it was about 22 at the time. But it was a big eye-opener for me, um, especially, you know, when you see same-gender couples holding hands in Turkey, mm -hmm. 
walking down the street and no one's saying anything. But then when you're, yeah. you know, and it, it's always the little ones that go, oh, mum, look, why are they holding hands? You know, what are the two boys yeah. holding hands walking down and mum and dad would be like, oh, that's just wrong. So just keep walking. Don't say anything. And it's just harsh. And you sort of like go, okay, if I open my mouth or it sort of like suppresses you from coming out. And, yeah. you know, wait, wait. you've got a fear and you don't know what's mm. going to happen, you know. Yeah, well, that's so, it. It's, it's, that if that's you, it's not going to be a, a, a positive response, isn't it? So, yeah. Exactly. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah. have you got plans to go back there one day? I, I want to. Um, yeah. I really uh, want to go back around June, July, sometime um, in the summer when they when Istanbul has their actual Pride March. Um, oh, unfortunately, there's no dogs on bikes there. <laughs> but um, We can um, fix that. But we can. We can. <laughs> so contingent there. <laughs> yeah. Be great. But, um, yeah, it's, um, you know, being there the last time and seeing what I saw. I mean, we're going back to... 03, 04, uh, when I was yeah. there last. But um, being encouraged, like when I came back, um, it, it made me think a lot as to yeah. what I wanted to do with my life because I really did not want to stay in the closet. It was just yeah. draining. So it's you, just were, draining. You, were aware, you were aware back then, but you weren't out? I've like, known my whole yeah. life. <laughs> right. yeah. Like I've, I've known my whole life, but you know, you grow up, you see, you know, you think there's something wrong with you. Um, you know, people are like, no, that's wrong. Or it's like a, you know, you've got your religious aspects and cultural aspects and whatnot. But um, mm. you, you sort of like go, is there something wrong with me? There must be something wrong with me, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But. Well, it's it, natural to think that yeah. everything you see is such you know, negativity around it, you know, something as mm. simple as guys holding hands, like, and it's just that negativity that's automatically just cast upon them straight away, like, so, of course, be, you know, scared to come out. I think Beck and Absolutely. I were talking last week, you know, like with my mum saying, if you ever turn out butch, I'll brain you, you know. And of course <laughs> saw that, I'm yeah. Oh, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be. It's it's tough. Like right? it really is. Um, yeah. So um, no dikes on bikes. Um, it's interesting you say that because nearly every city that has a pride march, they mm -hmm. may not have an, an official <laughs> chapter of dikes on bikes or a club or anything, but mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, there is a group of women on wheels that yep. are referred to as dikes on bikes um, but may not have a <laughs> club or anything like that. So most pride marches, there will be some some dikes on a bike. On a bike. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've, I've never looked at um, any footage or anything from Istanbul Pride. I might have a look into that. I'll send you some. I, um, I was uh, reading up, I was having this conversation with um, another friend of mine. She's, um, you know, from the middle, she's Lebanese herself and, we're just discussing, you know, um, it, yeah, how many, like, gay idols do we have, <laughs> you know, from our cultures. It's like, do you know any? And she's like, I don't know any. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know any either. So, and we just, and it just got me Googling and YouTubing and it's just amazing how you just can't find um, certain things. But um, uh, it came up with... Um, Istanbul Pride, where a particular actor that my grandparents and my family loved watching, like, you know, on Turkish TV. Yeah, and he yeah. used to dress up as a woman and entertain. And he'd been doing that for, like, 30 years before I even I started watching. And I'm like, you guys wow. seriously don't know that this guy's a drag queen. Seriously <laughs> don't know that this guy's a drag queen. <laughs> wow. And, that's and that's, Yeah, and it's just, um, you, you just go, that's... That guy's a drag queen. They're like, no, no, no. He's married. He's got kids. I'm like, um, no, he's not. Look him up. And it's like, yeah. no, he's not. He's got kids, but he's not married. <laughs> but yeah. you can't assume. I'm not going to judge. You know, that's not up yeah. to me. So, yeah, right. 
Yeah, I was thinking about that stuff today and I put a post up on my Facebook page, um, you know, about – because I've been doing some videos because Ida Hobbit Day is coming up yeah. this week. So I've had quite a few organisations and local council and stuff reach out and for me to put different videos and stuff mm. together. So I did a bit of work on that today. Um, but it just got me thinking about and, – and also last week chatting with – with um with Beck about Lesbian Visibility Day and mm. you know and and why visibility is so important um and I think you know like it, it is it's it's about you know when you're growing up and like who are mm. you wrong who are you being influenced by you know yeah um and I I think back then and I didn't have any role models like mm. any queer gay role models um you know i think the terms we had back then was gay and lesbian like that was it yeah um, pretty much the same <laughs> all, the, yeah, all the all the um labels i guess um mm. you know but then you've got that whole other other layer of intersectionality which is you know obviously different culture um yeah. ability you know um and you know religion and all that kind of stuff mm. so when you throw that all together and then you start looking for role models that kind of meet that criteria, yeah. like, they're bloody few and far between. So oh, yeah. that's that's why visibility is so important, you know. Absolutely. And, it, Absolutely. and, it's, good. and it's why, I guess, doing these um, interviews and stuff like that, mm. because we've had a, I've had a lot of people... Um, you know, listening and joining in conversation. Uh, we've had, I think, about six or seven new members in the last week or so. Yeah, um, I saw that. that have joined up. And so people are getting to know us um, and who we are as people. Like, mm. Because Dykes on Bikes, regardless of what chapter you come from, just that term, that brand, that, like, that, that, that is a role model. Yeah, you know, and we, I guess, we have a certain responsibility to live up to that and to be yeah. role models for, you know, in, in a lot of the young people, but just everyone, you know, absolutely, and especially like with with DOB, like we tend to have a lot of people that come out a little bit later in life as well as mm -hmm. a part of the club, and um, that that's that's scary as hell, you know, when oh hell yeah, <laughs> people you know, leave, leave their families and um, or their families, you know, don't want anything mm. to do with them anymore, their kids disown them and, you know, there's a lot of challenges there. Yeah. So, you know, we've got to be role models for these people as well. So yeah. um, it's it's important for us to tell our stories. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, also, just going on that, your, your wife, is she home? Yeah. Is she they come and say hi as well, or is she hiding? She there? she was actually working in the next room, oh, so okay. I I took I took a mental health day today, yeah. <laughs> um because we've been so flat out, and she's in the next room. I know she's watching. Um, she's like I'm watching, I'm watching. So, Hello. Um, there she is. She's like I'm shy. Hi, <laughs> love. Well, I think Joe, you should come out and say good day. Joe, so, come um, and say hi. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, just just going back, uh, quickly touching on that cultural thing as well. Now, yeah. Joe's background as well. She's Lebanese. Lebanese. So, yeah. did you have any like issues there, like with anything? You know, well, obviously different cultures, and then throw in the whole lesbian thing. You know. Yeah. Well, Joe's um, Joe actually came out to family. They were fine, um, but obviously. Um, you know, the again, the cultural and the religious aspect kicks in. And um, obviously her experience was different. Um, she actually came out at a time when I was overseas. Yeah. And I was actually um, literally forced into an engagement <laughs> to someone. So um, wow. pretty much, yeah, you know, she, I wasn't out to anyone. So, and if I did come out to anyone especially being in Turkey, um, you don't know because you don't know what you're going to get yourself into. Um, I didn't know the area that well, even though I'd been there um, twice before, but, hey, I'm a tourist. <laughs> um, yeah. But, um, you know, she came out to her mum, obviously, because she needed to talk to someone. And um, it was great with, with her mum. Her mum was like... She's literally my mum. <laughs> you know, I call her mum from day dot. So, yeah, yeah. Um, 
it, it was, um, you know, she, you experience, she experienced the same thing. Um, you know, it's a matter of trying to, and she says it as well, we, we don't like the word of um, acceptance because, yeah. you know, the more someone says to you, I accept you, I accept you, it's like, are you trying to convince yourself? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Almost Just, has the opposite effect. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, um, um, but you just got to overcome that sort of stuff. And pretty much our cultures and, you know, the religious beliefs and so forth are pretty much exactly the same. So, you know, it's just a matter of depending on, like I said, depends on your family, you know, um, yeah. how, how open-minded they are and, um, you know, and where it goes from there. And mm. I think at the end of the day, it's about education. It's just communication yeah. and education are the key. You know, there's nothing wrong with you. You're perfectly fine. You're human. Yeah. We all bleed the same. Conversation, isn't it? Like, you know, yeah. Yeah, conversation, education, and it leads to, you know, growth mm. and, yeah. Yep. So yep. you and Joe got married? Yep. We got married two years ago. Yep. When um, it became legal, um, yeah. we did not want to get married in another country. Yeah. Um, why should we? We shouldn't have to. Absolutely. Um, we would have said the same thing if we were in Lebanon or Turkey. So um, we've had so many friends go to us, oh, I'll go to New Zealand or go to America. Yeah. Why should I have to? Why should we have to? Right. Yes. So, yeah. you know, um, but where were you so when? Glad. Where were you when it when um, the vote came through? I was at work, and it was one of the most epic days of my life. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, it was. It, it's amazing how you know the people that you work. Obviously, oh, we work um, for the government, so you've got people around you. You know, square box, fluorescent lighting, yeah. loads of desks, and um, the. The big tea room was just packed with people, and you're like, "Oh God, you know, what shit are you gonna get? <laughs> What's mm. gonna happen? You don't yeah. know everybody on the floor." But um, the minute it was announced, all I heard was a massive cheer mm. just go through the tea room, and I'm just like, "Yes!" Yeah. <laughs> so my desk, I'm like, "Yes!" <laughs> and um, cool. I had a yeah, it was, it was, and um, you know, it. We've been waiting for so long to have it here, and mm. you just you go, you know, it's it's just a matter of do you understand? You know, you, you tell tell the same people, you explain it to them. It's like, do you understand now? Would you mm. would you go to another country to get married if you could do it in your own? Yeah, that's so right. It's, it's, and it's not just about signing a piece of paper. You know, it's not just about yourself. It's a whole community of people, of humans that want to commit to themselves and to their mm. partners' mm. life. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So how, how long have you and Joe been together in total? Uh, we hit 22 years last week, Tuesday. It's incredible, isn't it? It's like I was saying to, long. Sue, to Sue, um, who we interviewed, I think it was episode two, um, mm. You know, like her and Jen have been together for 34 years or something like that and or yep. more. Um, you know, mm -hmm. that's like 200 years in lesbian years. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what's your secret? Communication. Yeah. Communication. Yeah. Occasionally cook for your wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> um, on that, who does the cooking? Does Joe cook we, mostly, or no? We both do. I, yeah. Uh, I mean, she cooks Lebanese food. Yep, yeah, thirty-seven years yeah, of any. Thirty-seven. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So she, if she cooks, she cooks Lebanese food, and I cook Turkish food. Sometimes. <laughs> um, sometimes. <laughs> what you say uh, I think I, <laughs> hey I've cooked more during ISO than I have actually ever cooked but um no nah, yeah I think we both we both cook evenly it just depends on the mood um it just depends on what we're doing as well when you get home can you be bothered cooking can you not 
yeah, so like that. Pretty much everyday life, as I said. We just, we just tried that. Have you tried that like Hello Fresh stuff? Nah. Is it good? A mate of mine, a, a mate of mine um, was given away. Like you can get like a free like weeks worth of food. It costs like ten bucks. It's ridiculous. Right. I'm not joking. It's amazing. All right. So good. Yeah. Yeah. We used to, we used, because of so gym and stuff, we used to get you foods and I think they're doing yeah. similar like boxes, but I prefer to like go shops, buy food, buy what I want to buy. I'm yeah, sick of the supermarket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm over under the supermarket. Like it just does my head in sometimes. I went for a drive today, got some shopping. <laughs> <laughs> got some veggies. So, I'm gonna do a veggie rice tomorrow. So, cook dinner tonight. Um, no, I bought a shepherd's pie today because oh, you know it was just um we're trying to support like the local businesses around here as well. Yeah. And um, so after I did the shopping, just went and got a nice big shepherd's pie and um, yeah. hit it up. And, yeah, it's been good though. Delicious. Good stuff. Yeah, awesome. Well, let's let's talk about bikes and dikes on bikes a bit more. Let's yeah. go back to that and let's talk about what – tell us about your bike. Um, it's a Harley Davidson 500, yeah. Street 500, so not 2019 model. Stock standard, nothing's been changed on it, can't be staffed at the moment and no money. So <laughs> um, They're expensive to, you know, start customising. Yeah, pretty much. And at the end of the day, like, I, I'd rather spend on the a bigger bike, you know. So yeah. so yeah. it's just a matter of saving for that. And um, <clears throat> got three years, I think, yeah, three years mm -hmm. to go. So so when did you get your licence? How long have you been riding for? Um, two years. So we, we joined Dykes on Bikes. We didn't have, um, we didn't have our bike licence when we actually joined. Um, yep. so we were part of the lit crew. Um, and then the lesbians in cars. <laughs> we love the lit. They're a vital part of our organization. It's great, they especially when it's yeah. pouring down with rain and it's cold. And they carry our gear for us, they're just the we best. <laughs> we love you, <laughs> Liz. Um, yeah. Got it in November, November of 2018. We've got our learners. Um, Joe yep. and I both went together. So, and you've got mountain bikes. Don't we do. That How cute. Yes, we do. We bought the same bikes, except mine's yeah. shorter because I'm a short ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a I'll put a picture of the matching bikes on the interview when we upload it to Facebook. <laughs> Did so you want me to cute. go down and show you the bikes? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take yeah. this down. Let's go. Start it up. Oh, I need my key. Hang on. Where's my key? So, is this the only bike you've ever ridden? Um, it's Apart official. Um, no, I used to, um, I've ridden dirt bikes when I was younger. And yeah, right. um, yeah, my um, best friend's um, dad used to own two of them and he used to live on the other side of a paddock and um, he used to go down to the, their place and um, we used to hop on. He's actually the one who showed us how to ride a bike. And yeah, cool. um, funny stuff though, I got told off, like I never told my mum. So biggest tomboy ever. <laughs> and um, <laughs> sorry to that. Sorry? Did you come off the dirt bikes at all? Yep, and that was the last time I actually rode because my mum found oh, out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Did you hurt um, you know, yourself? I um, fell off the bike and yeah. I literally, I hit a rock, which I didn't see. And yeah. Um, yeah. I basically um, went head forward and fell on the side. My side was yeah. all bruised, my leg was all bruised. I forgot the key to the garage. Hang on. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, of course, you couldn't get away. You couldn't hide that from your mum. I did for about a couple of days. 
Oh, um, wow. It was only when she actually walked in while I was having a shower. Yeah. Um, she saw the bruises and just went, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. And she thought I got into a fight um, with someone because my brother was being bullied at the time by some of the kids around, around our place. And, um, yeah, I used to sort of like do the sisterly thing and protect. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> fell off the bike. <laughs> I don't want yeah. you going and harassing kids that did nothing. <laughs> so um, my mate's dad got an earful and um, and that was the end of it. <laughs> He's just gone, you're never riding that bike again. <laughs> How old were you then when you come off the bike? Well, we've lost you. Can you see me? Oh, there you are. Yeah. There we go. How old were you? Come off the bike. I was fifteen. And then, and then now you've just got your license two years ago. So yeah, it's, it's a bit of a you know <coughs> long break before rides. It was um, predominantly more from threats, not just my mum at the time, but when Joe and I were actually going to um, get our licenses when we first saw you guys at Mardi Gras in '09. And we're just like, oh, my God, it's those on bikes. And I'm like, you know, I really want to get a bike, right? <laughs> and we were just talking about it with her mum and um, she's just gone, if you get on one of those things, I will never talk to you guys ever. <laughs> I will disown you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and this is a woman whose family have actually had, you know, bikes all their lives. So yeah. but, um, when we went for it, um, two years ago, didn't tell anyone. Um, so you guys were the only ones that knew, and we just did it. Oh. Got it. Yeah. And then bought the bikes, went to mum's, and went, guess what we got? <laughs> On oh, how'd that, that go was, over? It went well. It was pretty good. Oh, that, she just, yeah. <laughs> she was just like, oh my god, okay, <laughs> ride safely. I'm like, you're coming on the back of the bike <laughs> when I get my piece. Yeah. So I'll just flick it over. There you go. There go. Look There's at a that. Twist. So that one's there. This one's Joe's one. Matchy, not, matchy. That there's any, not that there's any difference. And there's mine. So Yours they're pretty thin. Lowered, yeah, just suspension and seat has been lowered um, because I'm short. I'll just look at that. And there we go. So cool. They needed to be warmed up. How long's it been since you've ridden? Um, I rode uh, last week actually to work. Yeah. Hang on. I'll just switch them on. Yeah, uh, we rode two weeks ago. So um, we rode in, we went in, we went once a week for about two weeks just to, yep. um, you know, catch up and do stuff around in Mooney Pond. So um, it worked out well. So we got to ride. It was a nice day. Yeah, and, nice. Um, I think Joe's going to ride on Wednesday when she goes in. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's like there's so much fun, but I do miss it. Can't wait to get out on a ride. Oh, I do miss it. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's got to go pitch black again. Hang on. Ooh. Spooky. Is that someone it's standing pretty. behind? You? No, that's just me. Don't scare me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know, there's someone there. <laughs> uh, um, so, um, you you rode in in Pride March this year. Yep, this year and, and last, year. Um, last year. Yep. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about Pride Marches. What was it like? Uh, I look in all honesty. I love Pride March. I've always gone to Pride as well. So, it's um, it's a different feeling when you're part of it, as opposed to standing there and watching. Um. Because I think it's more the effect that you have. Like, I know we've mentioned it quite a few times, but 
it's just the sound of the bikes that just let everybody know that we're there. Mm. And, um, so, you know, just announcing the, um, I'm a bit exhausted now. God, I haven't walked in a while. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I think it's more, um, it's, you know, the visibility aspect of it, um, being able to show that we're there for everyone. Um, I, I love this year because of the fact that, you know, we wanted to say we want our helmets off. So um, that was actually really good. And um, with, with, with the community, like, and Ducks on Bikes, we're a constant. Like, the community knows we're going to be there. And yeah. they know, you know, that once those bikes start, that's, that's like, that's the signal, yeah. you know? Yeah. Here we go, kind of Everyone's thing. Everyone's going to start. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a significant... Um, part that we play in in pride marches <laughs> all over the world because as soon as yeah. soon as our bikes start and because we're at the start like the enthusiasm like the anticipation it's it's all just builds up you know and then all of a yeah. sudden everyone's like, ah, screaming and carrying <laughs> on started yeah <laughs> and it's pretty that cool was, that was actually one of the main things that um caught our attention as well like Mardi Gras 09, first Mardi Gras ever. And yeah. we were actually right at the front um, at one of the um, the close-up sections. And yeah. um, just hearing the bikes and having you guys come up and being able to see you, you know, in like literally like two metres away, it was yeah. amazing. And just hearing the bikes go off and yeah. you could actually see our mouths just go, Bleh. You know, and it's just, it was just amazing. It is, it is. I remember, I think it was 2006 was my first Sydney Mardi Gras. Um, oh, and I was I was with some mates and we got this mm -hmm. room on, right on Oxford Street. So we had this balcony that overlooked the parade. Um, that would have been great. And I remember the bikes, like, riding down and then back up. And I remember looking at my mate and... um we we had this thing with that right bucket list. Mm -hmm. We're gonna we're gonna join docks on bikes and we're gonna ride in Mardi Gras in Sydney. That was like Joe and I. <laughs> and it was about, so it was two thousand and six, the mm. very beginning of two thousand and twelve. So six years later, I joined yeah. docks on bikes Melbourne. Ha! Oh, six years. Yeah. Six Far years. Out. Like, yeah. Yeah. And um, we did it, and then yeah, and then like the rest is history, of course, because I've been there. Like I've just stayed, yes. spent the best. Um, but yeah, so so you also you come to Mardi Gras this year, yeah, as a member of Dykes on Bikes Melbourne. <laughs> but yep. you did not ride in Pride March. I'm not giving <laughs> you a hard time. I want to know. I want to know how it felt when you were on the sideline. <laughs> Pure shit rode past you pure shit it was oh i was just you know when you you've got you've got the pride going it's just like yeah i'm proud of my crew i'm proud of you guys but then i'm just like assholes i just wanted to ride why couldn't i ride <laughs> and it's all you know finances at the end of the day but um oh my god the the it's just like i'm so jealous <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm so jealous. I think I said that quite a fair few times that day. <laughs> next year, mate. Next, next year. year. Well, hopefully, hopefully we have one next year. How devastating would it possible. be to have a Mardi Gras? We could do it in our house. Everybody we'll just, just, it's not the yeah, same. We'll do it. <laughs> it's well, not the same. We could do our little parades up and down our driveway. <laughs> <laughs> Someone, someone is asking me, uh, if, uh, how long has Joe been president now? Um, I became president in 2014. So I was vice president, I think, for about a year, a year and a half. And then I was acting president. And then, yeah, got elected president uh, in 2014. So hope that answers your question. <clears throat> uh, if anyone's got any questions, just send them through. Now, Sam, um, yeah, far away. 
<laughs> have you, you you talked about um, Istanbul Pride <clears throat> before, and there's no DOB there. But have you got any other prides like in the world that you would be like? What would be your bucket list? Would it be Istanbul yeah. Pride? in that or that Istanbul pride would be in that that's my number one um yeah even if it's marching um solely because they're trying to get I mean we got Ida Hobbit coming up and um obviously it's only just been legalized here to you know we could change your name and your sex on your date of birth uh, on your birth certificate yeah. um in, in Turkey you can have the changes made medically but it's just not recognised. There's a lot of discrimination against our trans family. Yep. So um, what actually spurred me on with Istanbul Pride was I think more the fact that in 2014, I think it was, they had up to about 100,000 um, people march that year in Istanbul. So, wow. you, you know, and it's just like, I'm so going to go there. And it was banned. Yeah. Pride was banned yeah. by the mayor at the time. But um, they didn't give a shit, to be honest with you. They came every year in June or July and they kept marching and they kept doing it every year. And wow. um, I think it was last year the new mayor basically said, why are we stopping the marches? <laughs> you know, everybody has the right to march and voice their, um, you know, what they want and how we yeah. could actually go about addressing these issues and um, how we could actually go about making changes. So yeah. fingers crossed something actually happens. <laughs> but um, oh, yeah. you know how we have all talk, no action, majority of the time. Um, Maybe we can do a, a, um, a, a Dark Sun Bikes Melbourne tour and we'll go to Istanbul Pride. I'd love to go to Turkey. Oh, that'd, it's be, been a bucket list. that'd be awesome. Yeah. Especially Istanbul. Especially yeah, yeah. in Istanbul. It's just massive. It's just massive. And, yeah, um, yeah that, that is my number one on my bucket list. Um, yeah. I think San Fran would be the next one. Um, but I'd have so, to do... No? Don't? Yeah. You say? Oh, oh. Saying, it's, it's so good. I did it in 2013. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'd 2013. 1.5 million people there for that one. That's awesome. I Couldn't move. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, awesome. But, it, you know, Mardi Gras here in Oz first. That would be the next, first one. Always Good start choice. at home. Always start at home. Yeah. <laughs> so I've done, I've done many, many pride marches. Um, mm. One year, I think, I think it was 2013, I did seven pride marches in that one year. Um, so I think it was uh, the local one. So we had Melbourne, Chill Out. I think we did yeah. Adelaide, Mardi Gras. And then I did, I oh know, Brisbane. Did I say Brisbane? No, so it's five. Yeah. And then I did um, uh, San Francisco and I did San Diego. Oh, San Diego. San Diego was amazing. That would have been, that would be cool. It it, it actually cool. really was. It reminded me of um, uh, Melbourne in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know how we have Midsummer Carnival. Yeah. And we have all the stalls and stuff like that. Mm. Like and just like in this big park, and there's a massive stage, and there's a bar, and you yeah. go shopping, and you know check out all the local orgs and stuff like that. Well. Mm. San Diego Pride is that. So you do awesome. the, whole, the whole parade route, which goes for like kilometres upon kilometres. Every Pride March I've ever done. Yeah, all the Pride Marches overseas, they just go for kilometres and like for ages. Mm. Like, whereas, you know, the ones here in Australia, they're over and done in like 10 Too short. Too short. Like, oh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but saying that, San Diego, you do this massive long parade route and then you end up oh. at what is like Midsummer Carnival. That would but be awesome. But Midsummer Carnival is tiny compared to the San Diego one. So mm. and it's, just, it's massive, yeah. And it just had that real community feel, you know, where it ended in yeah. the park. Whereas um, uh, for me, San mm. Francisco, it was 1.5 million people, but it was right in the city. 
So yeah. like you just impact in this concrete jungle, which I mean, it was <laughs> amazing part of, but it's much better in a park. <laughs> A bit of grass, you know. So get to chill yeah. out and cool down a bit. <laughs> yeah, I'd highly recommend San Diego Pride. I'd do it again. Definitely That's on the list. I've got to write that down. I think Am- I think you guys are talking about um, Reykjavik and Amsterdam as well. Um, that would be good to go to. Yeah, um, Germany, Beck, so yeah. Beck wants to do Amsterdam. Um, Sue and Jen are going. To, we're, we're supposed to be doing Amsterdam this year, but um, yeah. of course. That's not going to happen. So maybe next year. Um, I there's so many. I have to go and do London Pride and New York Pride. Like that'd be good. Yeah, that and I met awesome. I met the organizer when I was in uh, Hamburg. I met one of the organizers of Shanghai Pride. Um, oh, sweet! She gave me a flag. She had a Shanghai fly, uh, uh, Shanghai Pride flag. Yeah, and I asked her for it and she gave it to me. So I have to get it out somewhere. Yeah, I'll bring That's it out cool. next, next week. Yeah, I might bring some flags out next week. I've got the ham, Hamburg Pride flag as well. So, yeah. That's awesome. That's, good. That's yeah. cool. So we, we've been asked a question. Um, are we going to do the quiz, the 50-50s? <laughs> if you what want. Do you reckon? I'm easy. I'm, I'm easy. Fine. Yeah, go for it. Here we go. Let, let's let's start off right. So fifty fifty. Just tell me which one. So I've got a, I've got a, a mixture of last week's and the weeks before. So we got yeah. sunrise or sunset. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, I'd say both, but I'm going to say sunset. You only get one choice. <laughs> sunset. I did say sunset. <laughs> Um, Smarties or M and M's? M and M's, especially the peanut ones. Oh, really? I saw the other day on the TV they're doing mint ones now. Oh, Joe would love those. Yeah, she goes fucking crazy over mint. Anything mint. <laughs> what about they had those those um the Daryl Lee mint balls. Oh. Oh, mate, oh. they're dangerous. They are so dangerous. Uh, you shouldn't have seen I... What happened there? I think you buzzed what out. What was that? I was just saying, you shouldn't have said that. She's going to make me go and buy them. <laughs> oh, they're totally worth the so trips. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, totally sent shopping. Nice. Yeah. Okay. They're very good. Um, Done. Still water or sparkling? Oh, I'm a tap person. Just tap. Ah, so still water. Still water. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, Netflix or Stan? Oh, uh, far out. Stan's pretty good for a bit of variety of movies. Netflix yeah. is a good for series. I haven't been on them lately though. Um, but I'm going to say, I'll probably say Stan. Stan, right. Good one. Um, nail clippers or nail scissors? Oh, far out. Clippers. (laughs) (laughs) I use Uh, scissors to cut things with, not my nails. (laughs) It annoys, it bugs me out. Tiny, tiny little scissors with blades like that that are bent, like... I know. I'm just like, why? Shit things, aren't they? <laughs> um, uh, tea or coffee? Um, I'm a tea girl, but I do love my coffee. But I'm going to go with tea. Yeah. Tea. <laughs> um, someone's asked us a question. Isn't there one in New York? Pride? Um, uh, there is a Pride. And their queer motorcycle club's called Sirens Motorcycle Club. And New York Pride's normally held on the same day as San Francisco Pride. So, you, you know, you can't be in two yeah. places at once. So, um, okay. Uh, white chocolate or dark chocolate? Dark. Dark chocolate. Good choice. Like those mm-hmm. real bitter ones, like 90%. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, 
Yep, yep. Have you tried the um the the carob ones? The carob dark chocolate? I'll give that to my dog. There? <laughs> you give carbs. that to your dog. Does he? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, they're freaking amazing. I love them. Yeah. yeah. Delicious. Um roller skates or roller blades? Skates. Old school. Old school. Nice one. Old school. Um, Coles or Woolies? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say Woolies. Only because it's like literally five minutes up the road. <laughs> For convenience, right? For convenience. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Now this one. Our word or orange is a new black? <sighs> I'm going to go L word. L I got, word? I got sick of the orange <laughs> for a while. Oh, um, orange is just crap. It, it's, anyway. <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's um, good. L word or the real L word? Do you remember that oh. series? Oh, far out. I do know the other series. I'm just thinking. I, I can't. I'm not sure. More a, kind of, more a reality one, that one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I know. But then, you know, when you go the real L word, I, I sort of like go, are you putting it on or not? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to say the real L word. Ooh. Only because there was... Um, in light of a lot of um, the characters or the people that were actually in it. Um, yep. They did bring a lot of things to light where, as opposed to, you know, someone reading off the script. So, yeah, you know, I'm going to say, I'm going to say the real L word, but, um, yeah. you know, yeah, I, might I, I might watch it again. <laughs> Someone's asked, uh, Kelly Chrome, Lebanese food, or Turkish <laughs> food. <laughs> Turkish food, Kelly, come on. Or Latino food. Or what? Latino food. I do love Latino food. I love Spanish <laughs> food. I go ape shit over Spanish, Mexican, you know. But I do love Lebanese food. It's They're pretty much the same. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> All right. That, that concludes our game of 50-50. Now, How cool is that? See? We've got about, we've literally got like six minutes left because we get booted off, like <laughs> one hour, bang, gone. So I just got to be conscious of the next few minutes. Thanks, um, so I've, I've got a couple of things here. Um, so, um, who inspires you? Oh, uh, I've got quite a fair few people actually. Um, yeah. From. I'm going to say my nan. She raised me. I was just going to say you, you talk about your nan a lot. She's um, she's 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 always been a storyteller. Yeah. Doesn't matter if she's in a pissed off mood, good mood, neutral mood. You don't know what she's thinking mood. <laughs> um, she passed away a few years ago, but um, like it, it's just she raised me, so it's just been ingrained. Um, so my nan is one. Um, yeah. I'm going to say. I'm going to say my wife. So, yeah. Joe inspires me all the time. I learn a shitload off her. Um, yeah. She kicks my ass when I need to be kicked. Um, you know, uh, a lot of women in our community, I'm going to say you. Oh, mate. Yeah, you as well. Um, you know, just being there for the community. Look, a lot of people think that, you know, just because we're in dikes on bikes, we know everything, the ins and out of, um, you know, the LGBT community. Um, when I joined dikes on bikes, like you said before, I knew lesbian, gay, trans, <laughs> and bi. Yeah. Those mm -hmm. are, you know, and I'm still learning, you know. I'm still learning how to address people by their pronouns um, and how to speak to anyone in the community in public gatherings and mm -hmm. so forth. So... Um, the community is like constantly evolving. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, and and I think also what you touched on before is, um, you know, when it comes to um, 
acceptance, for want of a better word, um, mm -hmm. is education. Yeah. You know, and just because we're a part of the LGBTIQ community doesn't mean that we are educated mm -hmm. about our community. Exactly. So we, we have to be educated as well because um, mm -hmm. there's so many different aspects. Um, oh, hell yeah. You know, like when before when we said, um, you know, growing up we had gay and lesbian, that, that were the only two. That's it. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. um so you know and now there's like a billion other labels and and every day it's just constantly evolving and, mm -hmm. and it is to keep up with but you've got to make the effort because you know there's a whole new generation of people coming through and yeah what labels are we going to have you know in the next couple of years like and it's yeah. you know i guess at the at, at the end of the day it's about just respect mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. Can I do how they want? Absolutely. I was yeah. actually um, having discussion, this discussion with my brother and he's just like, what? And look, um, I'm not one for labels. I've said this many times. Um, and it turns out he's not either. He's like, why yeah. can't we just call each other human? Why, why does, you know, why do we have to have labels for people? Mm -hmm. um, why are we at that point where we actually have to have labels for people yeah. when we're when we're just human can't we just be human and um he's like we were born you're born that way quoted mm. lady gaga he actually quoted lady gaga and i'm just like mate you know unfortunately this is the way it is and we just need to progress it mm. one way or another but um absolutely yeah. Awesome. Good answer. I love that. Tell us, um, for people watching, what do you wish they knew about Dykes on Bikes Melbourne? Not everybody rides a bike. <laughs> we get that question all the time. Um, I thought yeah. I'd throw it in there. <laughs> um, look, it's a great club. Um, and it's not just about club, you know, we, we could say bike club, however way you want to say it, but it's just the it's a great atmosphere. You're encouraged by the women around you of all ages. Um, I did forget to add a couple of women that are in the club, Sue, Jen, TJ, mm -hmm. Pat, you know, um, I've learned so much from them, um, from where they've been and how far they've come in there, in their, um, in their journey, their life journey. Yep. And, um, and look, they inspire me as well. So, and it encourages me to continue to do, you know, and to do what I want to do to help our community go forward. And I think it's the same thing for the club, for all the members, really. You know, yeah. that encouragement yeah. between each other. Um, yeah. Just helping each other, I guess. Yeah. Help, lend a hand. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, no, yeah. Don't be afraid. Come down. Nice Set one. high. Set high. People are we? <laughs> We're not. We don't look yeah. mean. Don't worry. Half the time. <laughs> Well, we're going to have to, unfortunately, cut it off. Every time this hour goes so fast. Every I know. Week. Um, I just want to say a huge, big, big thank you um, to thank you. you. And now, love and respect to your wife, um, Jo. Perhaps we'll get Jo on one day and have a chat. Um, it's close. Yeah, thank you for, for being so open and your willingness mm -hmm. to be a part of this. Um, we absolutely love having you and Jo in our club. Um, and yep. Can't wait to get back out on the road and, and go for a fang. Can't wait. <laughs> Can't so, wait. Uh, next week, um, next week we're actually going to be on at 8 p.m. next week. Um, we have a very special guest on next week. So we've got um, uh, Russo, Renee Russo, who runs Tomboy. Is also a member of Dykes on Bikes Melbourne. So um, we've got to fit in with Renee's very busy schedule. So it'll be 8 o'clock next Monday night. And we'll see you then for another episode of Dykes Off Bikes. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, everyone. Peace out. Thank you. <laughs>